Welcome back to Dum Dums 2099, where improvisers who've never roleplayed before journey into a futuristic world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Grand Wizard Bukake, your host. Alan, Declan, and Honor System killed Bethany Rathburn in an ambush and are now in a standoff with a futuristic Drizzt to word. Will they be able to convince him Alan isn't Tiffany Rathburn? Can Honor System hold his own against a deadly dark elf? Hell, could Declan manage to shoot something before he dies? Find out next on Dom Doms and Dragons 2099. Who are you? My name's Drizzt to Erden, and I came here to kill some Rathburns. Well, first of all, it seems like you've killed several of them, so congratulations. Also, we sort of killed Bethany Rathburn on the road where she's like a smoking wreck. That's unexpected, but pleasant. Yeah, we're surprised. We thought we were going to have to come over here and try to take over an army. Meet Alan. This is our Tiffany Rathburn. We're trying to create a little bit of chaos. Yes, our agents had informed us that there was no surgery booked, so I understand the ruse now. Clever. Oh, thanks. So, Alan... (laughs) Why do you look like Tiffany Rathburn? First, I mean, like, you gave us your name, but I'm not quite sure why we should trust you at this point. And he just kind of, like, looks to the many corpses and then kind of looks back. Do you have a choice? Well, wait, are you threatening to kill us? Now we really just got to draw a line here. This felt like we could all be on the same team for a minute. Uh, I really believed we were. I was merely asking questions. And then your Tiffany Rathburn Allen over here... Decided to get nosy. You've got to be with the prodigals, right? Because this is exactly how it went down with Fiddlesworth. The prodigals are a bunch of short-sighted fools. I believe he is with House Duerden. That would make the most sense. Got it. The robot is correct. House Duerden is no fan of the prodigals, nor of the Rathburns, nor much of the King Glomrata. Our people were driven out of the caves in which we had made our ancestral homes for years and driven to the very fringes of society. So now that there's available space, we figured it was time for our voices to be heard once again. I'm here under orders of my matriarch. To kill the Rathburn so you can take their seat? I don't know. What's your end game here? I'm not against it. Clearly, we've got some aligned goals. It is time for House Duerden and the rest of the Drow to reclaim their place in the world. And if that means tearing down the existing system, we shall do it. If that requires there to be no more houses or seats, we will do that. But either way... The Spider Queen will have her due. And every time someone talks about tearing down the system, Honor System is like right there being like, oh, yes, okay, this is an ally. <laughs> yeah, and see, all Declan hears is the word queen at the end. <laughs> He's like, nah. All right, well, I guess take allies where you can get them. Anybody who's anti conglomerate is anti the right things. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, you've got plans that you've got to play close to the vest. We do. Ditto. What is your cause? We hate the conglomerata, and we hate Typhus, and we'd like them all to be shot in the face. He savors that as he looks at his guns, and he goes, shooting Grace and Typhus would be a true pleasure. I like the way you think, my friend. This so- is Tiffany Rathburn engaged to Typhus' son. Adonis. Exactly. Interesting. We Cur- had not heard Hence this. Hence the ruse. Well, ah. that'll be, it'll be announced at Mechfest. So, like, let's keep this between the queen, yourself, and us, because the more people who know, bad things happen. And he just kind of rolls his eyes and says, such a gaudy and ridiculous waste of time. Mechfest. Listen, I totally agree, but it turns out this might be our opportunity for a bright future. What would you say if we could give you and the rest of your handsome house... What if we could give you some opportunities to, say, get into MechFest around security and be able to throw some real murdery chaos into the mix? It's interesting. I know you are are not drow, and yet you seem to speak my language so well. (laughs) So basically, Drizzt informs you that the matriarch of House Duerden was planning on kind of launching an assault anyway. However, not at MechFest, because that's insane. That said, if you have ways to get them in, this is something that his house would definitely be interested in. You can tell that there's like a little extra heat on it for him. There's, there seems to be something else that he's gunning to do. But based on the, the way he said Grace and Typhus's name, you, you get a pretty clear image of what that probably is. Yeah, I feel like there's a similar history here. Okay, so we'll give him sweet, sweet X Japan <laughs> Sure. I think at this point we can say that you probably have a, yeah, like a safe chat that's that's just kind of yeah. collectively your allies. So it's where you can connect to the Chainsaw, to Freddy, to now the, the twists. twists, and now also to House Stewarden. Okay, everybody here's dead. She's fine, and the people we've got with us are fine. 
how do we get her out of this looking okay? Because we need her to be able to take over for the cover to hold up. He kind of crosses his arms, still, again, clutching the guns. Like, they seem as, as comfortable as, as hands <laughs> to him. I'm holding my rifle subconsciously. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm just holding magic. And he does, uh, <laughs> yeah, he he kind of uncrosses one arm, and he does the uh, Natalia thinking thing from Goldeneye, where he just taps the gun <laughs> against his head. <laughs> and says, I think I might have a solution to that. When I give the signal, start running. Okay, I mean, I feel like this is kind of clear. I would like to ask, how did you hear about this meet? This is a meet that we set up on short notice, and we were only in direct contact with Bethany Rathburn. Bethany's house is a little less in order than you might expect, although I suppose if you've been impersonating her daughter for some time, you have probably guessed this to be true. But Rathburn is too concerned with solidifying its holdings. It was very easy for us to infiltrate and very easy for us to gain the information of her itinerary. Would you be willing to share intel with us in the future? If it means bringing down the houses and restoring mine, absolutely. It definitely means bringing down the houses. One out of two ain't bad. <laughs> you know, we'll build from whatever we find at the base of the structure. We'll say the information he gives you will give Alan advantage on deception checks involving being Tiffany Rathburn. Because okay. it's basically, rather than giving you a bunch of specifics, also given that the odds of you actually going to Rathburn for anything are kind of low. It's enough that she can now speak to some of the inner workings. And like they don't have a skeleton key to the Rathburns, but they do have itineraries. They have business concerns. Enough that if this were a show like Secession or something, you could storm into a boardroom and say a few highly specific things that would make everyone go, oh, shit, how does she know about that? Mm. Oh, fuck, okay, I guess we have to take her seriously. A little bit like Bruce Wayne showing up at the boardroom. Oh, at Parker the end Howard of Dark stuff Night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you don't just enough to fuck with those sorts of meetings. But more importantly, it's enough that other people who are insiders will have to kind of respect the idea that okay. you're Tiffany. And also that Tiffany is actually the correct heir, if that makes any sense. Right. So Drizzt does a quick gun twirl to holster, and he pulls out an odd, it almost looks to your eye like a metallic Rubik's Cube. And he looks down and he's like, all right, girl, time to go. And he kind of gestures to you to run. And as you do, he pushes a button on the cube and throws it. And as he does, it unfolds into a mechanical panther. Gwent there, make it look good. And the thing just starts chasing you, doing that creepy robot run. Yeah. Mm. So you guys start booking it back out of the mine. I think subdermally you would have communicated this to the twists. So I guess Sublime would make sure that there's footage. Mm. Yeah, plus, uh, I mean, on our system, if you're recording Bourbon, sure, Britt might have recordings. Like, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll yeah. say it's, it's Bourbon, because what, what we specifically want is footage from outside, not from like... Oh, okay, got it, yeah. yeah. Mm. So Bourbon, yeah, will be operating, because it looks like one of the Coruscant Republic... Like a hover cam. Yeah. yeah, so it'll be doing that classic aerial view helicopter thing in Cops, where it's kind of zooming in, <laughs> and it shows you guys just kind of like booking it out, probably Declan firing some like stray shots over oh, your yeah, back. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, it's embarrassing how much I'm missing by, but <laughs> I gotta do a job. And the twists will kind of move in to take it. The panther will jump on them and like make a show of mauling them. But oh. it's on the ground. You can tell it's missing. But from mm. an aerial shot, it looks like this thing is decimating them. And as you kind of run back to your vehicles, the panther standing on top of like a quote, quote, dead twist just kind of like rears back its head. And from a booming speaker somewhere inside, it says, House Ventus sends its best wishes. And then you guys kind of book it into your vehicle and run. Ooh. Well, that could have gone worse. I mean, look at this. We don't have Bethany Rathburn, but we do have control of the Rathburn mm. house. And now we have probably the best murderer in the world. But it seems like he sort of wants to build a kingdom on all of our skulls. So, <laughs> I mean, upsy downsy, but I'm feeling overall positive. Mechfest is the next mission. Yeah, and we also got to solidify the house under the Rathburn. Mm -hmm. like, how long is it to Mechfest, huh? It's very close, so like two days or something. Then I think it's just sort of like showing that Tiffany's alive and interested, and we'll deal with announcements at Mechfest, right? Because Typhus is there, or do we need to storm into a boardroom and have her give a fancy speech, do you think? It's close enough in timing, and given that Tiffany is often in the wind, I think it's close enough that it'd be believable that she isn't like at the boardroom. Plus, I just don't think we really need That's also a boardroom scene. <laughs> Let's imagine the letters got sent around and she's in contention, so we're fine, yeah. With the announcement of Bethany Rathburn's death, immediately press releases and the, the net picks up the story. Her will does stipulate that Tiffany, as the next eldest child, will be temporary CEO until a vote of the council can be called with the corporation. Mm -hmm. That said, Rathburn Industries has been passed down from like three or four generations. So in all likelihood, particularly since Tiffany's cleaned up her act, the mm -hmm. odds of them not voting that in are, are slim to nil. With that, though, comes a phone call. I'm going to say you're, you're back at base now. You're looking into Atrix hard drives responses. There have been mm -hmm. a lot. 
Tiffany, you get a call from Grace and Typhus's personal line. And Bourbon is like, pardon me, Mistress Allen, I think perhaps you might want to take this one. Yeah, and I'll, I'll pick it up. So Dermal, you just hear me go, remember to do the voice. You can be sober, but you'd still sound the same. He talked to your Tiffany. Uh, Mr. Typhus. Ah, Tiffany, congratulations, Madam CEO. This was well done. And pinning it on Ventus was uh, unfortunate, but I understand a necessary cover. Thank you, sir. Tiffany, I also wanted to say I've been very impressed with the amount of, shall I put it, cleaning up your act you've done. I warn you, Adonis has not quite reached your level of zen yet, but uh, I'm sure you will whip him into shape. On that note, I also wanted to thank you for all of the work you've done leading up to MechFest. It has been nice to see you know how to handle yourself in business as well as in espionage. Confirmed, of course, with the untimely death of your mother, for which I do apologize, but as we have discussed, it was a necessary sacrifice. It is absolutely for the greater good of both of our houses. Excellent. Well, soon it will be but one house. On that note, when we come to announce your betrothal to my son at MechFest, I don't want the people to think that he's marrying the help. So while I appreciate everything you've done for the festival and organizing it, I'm turning it over to others in my organization who will make sure things run smoothly. We need you looking all parts like a CEO. So please come dressed appropriately and be prepared to schmooze and wine and dine. I know you're very good at those things, but we will need them in high order. Absolutely, sir. Uh, Just to ensure that everything runs smoothly, I do recommend a brief handoff meeting. At the beginning of the MechFest with the uh, staff who will be taking over. Tiffany, dear, it's so adorable you think you can offer suggestions to me, but thank you. (laughs) I'm glad to see you haven't entirely changed. Also, House Ventus is no longer one of our concern, so please do not intercede with them after your actions at the mine. I had to make certain sacrifices myself. Keep an eye on the news feeds, and we'll see you at MechFest. Okay, bye. (laughs) Bye. And it clicks off. (laughs) So obviously, Alan, things have been slightly complicated Mm -hmm. by this new turn of events. And sure enough, turning on the sort of live feeds, House Typhus has officially denounced House Ventus and has joined FF&S and Amazon in their war effort against Ventus. Ventus is now a completely blacklisted or burned house. Wow. Their interim CEO, he's like 21 (laughs) And is way over his head. But uh, following the death of the actual CEO, at least to the outside world, in the missile assault on Ventus headquarters. Mm. So he keeps yelling about conspiracies and and friends he thought he had. But he has been arrested. And Ventus has officially been blacklisted. Okay, well, that's not fucking great for us. But at the same time, we do have that recording of him saying he ran Ventus Mm -hmm. like an evil asshole. So we can save that as our, like, ace in the hole. We've got Mechfest, which is good. You're officially Tiffany Rathburn. Mm -hmm. You're officially going to run that fucking house because between you wanting it and Typhus needing it, you're going to be CEO. I guess we've got to get you some new fucking outfits because I don't think CEO is going to fly with those high-waisted jeans and your crop top tank top business. We need high-waisted dress pants that are very flowy. So we smash cut to the store. Hello, my name is Alfonso. Oh, God, you're back. Just take whatever pantsuits you want and leave. Well, we don't know if we need pantsuits this time. We've got to let the lady make a choice. So, Tiffany, what are you feeling like out of all of these options? The um, store is, like, not quite fully patched up from the last time you were here. There's still, like, bullet holes in the walls that have been covered with gum and shit. It's just really... <laughs> it was bad before. It's somehow worse now. Love it. It's going to be, like... Think of like how Tilda Swinton wears a pantsuit. You buy a One pantsuit a here and then you take it two doors down to a tailor who goes, oh, so much extra fabric and just like cuts it down to Tilda Swinton dimensions where Excellent. it's just like perfectly well fitted, fits long, your body exactly long, correctly. clean lines, very flowy yeah, and elegant. Very, very chic. Knowing we have to match your like CEO style and we've seen some of the security. Do we have to get like tuxedos to wear over armor? What do we do? Yes. I Absolutely. Would love to see honor system in a tuxedo. <laughs> well, we're both getting fitted tuxedos. So <laughs> I go in like grumpily to the fitting, wearing my tactical body armor. They have to wear it, make a tuxedo that fits over it. Yeah. Yeah. So yours looks like a, a vaguely like a kid wearing his dad's tux because it has to fit <laughs> over your tactical vest. Just a big jacket wearing man. 
Yep, that's me. And Honor System also gets a tuxedo. Yeah, just inscrutable, though. Like, they're just a blank visor just standing and then being measured and, and having it tailored to them. It looks like they're clothing a mannequin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You accomplish that. You've heard from Matrix. He has offered to set up a meeting. He says that the prodigal action is occurring soon and that any assistance would be greatly appreciated. He's offered to set up a meeting at a very trendy bar called the 5318008. It's largely trendy because of how hard the name is to say. I already see what you've done there as I write this down. It's boobies backwards in numbers. Yeah. (laughs) Do we still want to go to that, Alan? I imagine we do. Yes, absolutely. Everything is in motion now. We need all of the support that we can get. And this is our opportunity to get in with the prodigals, get in with the people who are on the ground already trying to sow destruction and chaos. I'm imagining you shouldn't go to this meeting as Tiffany, right? We'll have to make you look like somebody else. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, Alan can still use Ultra Self to look like pretty much anyone. Yeah, Yeah. perfect. Yeah, you've got that thing where you make your face into another face. You you do that. Mm -hmm. Honor system. (laughs) Yes. We will put you in a full body club costume with a mask. So you'll just look like one of those latex gimp fellas, but like a big one. And I... We'll also wear a latex skip mask, <laughs> so it'll look like you have two people to go with you, have to follow you around. Flawless plan. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I don't have any notes. <laughs> <laughs> Boobies, is it that kind of bar where people with gimp masks won't get a, a second look? Sure, it is now. I just didn't want it's us to show up future. to like, like a pizza hut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just in gimp masks. Yeah. Yeah. I it's think like an oxygen bar or something. We just show up with fucking sex masks on. Yeah. This is definitely like <laughs> a high class sci fi cocktail bar. So, yeah, lots of latex, lots of people wearing like truly incomprehensible sci fi outfits. Why is she wearing a tutu like a bandolier? Who knows? Why is that man wearing a cardboard box's shoes? Eh, It's fine. The main reason that uh, you suspect Atrix has picked this is it's kind of the last place you'd expect prodigals to be. I'm imagining this isn't the kind of place where you walk in with like a shitload of guns on you. No. So hidden pistol, no sword for honor system. And then we'll just kind of go see how it rides. Mm -hmm. So we'll go to the club. We all have code names. Let's pick fun code names. All right, Alan, what do you want your fake name to Um, be? And what do you look like in the spell you're using? I'm a little bit taller and thinner because obviously I can't change like my size. Are you just going to straight up look like Tilda Swinton? I feel like she's a little too classy to be going into this. She's going to make herself look like Jake Busey. (laughs) Think of... Think of like a female Jake Busey. There okay. we go. That's right. fine. So like a That's very great. a very rich female Jake Busey. Yes. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> as as cool as one can be when Jake Busey is involved. Yeah. Uh, honor system. What's your code? My name? name is Honor System. No, you have to pick a new one, like a template identity that we're going to plug on for this conversation. Because if people know your Honor System, we can't bring you into other meetings. Remember, and everyone knows who you are. I get shot more. I won't let them shoot you. I'll bring my sword. <laughs> um, no, it's just, it's a lie, right? Like it's a fake identity. And so honor system just, he, he can't. You can speak for him. You have in the past. Yeah, I um, guess I'm just going to have to keep doing it. Honestly, honor system, I just want to be clear. If you cannot learn to lie, you are never going to be able to like strike out on your own because it's going to be a real problem for you. So that might be one of those things we got to work on like longer term as like a goal. Imagine if you were a fictional character in the universe. <laughs> I, as not you, would like that to be your arc because it's more convenient for me, which is why also I'm a shooter, not a writer. Uh, Okay, so you have no fake identity and we can't let you talk to anyone. Uh, Alan, what should we call you? Let's go with something stupid like Kale. Kale. That's brilliant. I like that. So we have Kale. Kale Busey. (laughs) Uh, Here you go. Honor system, because you can't name yourself, but you could come up with a weird name for me. What's a thing that you would describe me as if you had to use one word? Lethal. There's my name. (laughs) Lethal. So lethal, honor system, and Kale Busey. (laughs) Load up into the equivalent of a taxi and head out to the club. You arrive several kind of layers up, so in kind of a much richer sector of Nairfrost. You pull up in front of a large club that it almost looks like a large carved out calculator over the door. And 5318008, writ large in calculator font, 
And then basically the front door would be kind of where the central keys would be. You get out and there's just an absolutely glamorous orc. And he goes, oh, greetings, greetings. And like we're talking like the David Bowie of orcs. Hmm. Wicked cool. His makeup is flawless. He's wearing like a suit that looks like it's both spandex and leather somehow. You have no idea how that's possible. But he greets you very warmly as, as you step out. And he says, oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, it's so good to see you. Who are you? I'm Kale. Kale. I love Kale. Oh, that is a fantastic <laughs> name for a fantastic person. And welcome. Welcome to the 5318008. Hope you're ready for some side action. Haha. Uh-huh. Yeah, all right. Great. Let's let's get you checked in. And these are your They're with me. escorts? Yes. We're talking like escort escorts or escort escorts? They're escort escorts, and they stay with me. All right. You know, I like to keep my partners close, too. That sounds great. All right, let's get you in there. I think because you showed up dressed in finery, he just immediately skips you past the velvet rope, which Mm. is, I guess, digital. (laughs) Like, pushes a button, (laughs) and it just clicks off for a second, and then it reboots up. And he leads you into the club. Immediately, you're just assaulted by pulsing beats. There's laser lights everywhere. There seems to be fake smoke. And you can see that the whole place is kind of like packed with people who are just kind of living their most hedonistic lives. There's drinking, eating, everything's on thing. That said, it is a rich place. So all the food is very small and all the drinks are very expensive. So the orc leads you through the bar and says, so is this your first time in the 5318008? It is. Excellent. Okay. Well, my name is Dynamo. It's very nice to meet you. Basically, all you need to know is every corner of this bar has a different pleasure in it, and it's up to you to find which one you want. If you need anything at all, please talk to one of our our friendly servers. You can tell that they work here because they're naked. I'm going to be outside greeting more guests like yourself, uh, but please enjoy. And, you know, if you you have a good time, which I'm certain you will, if you could like and review, that would be wonderful. Really helps our business, really keeps the lights on. So that would be great. And otherwise, uh, just have a great time. It gives you like a double cheek kiss and then he just kind of turns on one heel and leaves mm. how do we find this this guy did they suggest a corner that we're supposed to go to honor system for what kind of pleasure they did honor system will gesture over to what looks kind of like a barcade like vr booth which is a bunch of people like sitting in chairs with like headsets on like advisors over and stuff like that um, <laughs> and we'll say atrix informed me that he would set up a private chat room in the virtual sex simulator <laughs> all right so i guess we're gonna go get down then so <laughs> We'll like walk over, yeah, over and, and like neon lights over the section. It says like Mind Palace. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of take exception to that, but that's okay. You enter the sort of VR pod space. You're greeted by an unbelievably glamorous gnome who's wearing roughly the same makeup as Dynamo. It says, "Welcome, welcome! Oh, it's so it's so good to see you. Welcome to the Mind Palace. My name is Crash, and it's my job to just kind of help you." Have your fun, and we're going to have a lot of fun here. First and foremost, I need to ask, does anyone have any allergies? No. No. No allergies for me. Okay, excellent. That is very good to hear. You know, not sure what you're into, but don't want any of our synth food killing you. Okay, that's great. Is there a particular room you're looking for today here in the Mind Palace? There is a private VR sphere for a VIP party set up tonight. Oh, a VIP party. Well, very good. Okay, well, come this way, and I'll just plug you in. So he hands goggles to Declan, hands goggles to Alan, and then hands a cable to the yeah, <laughs> uh, honor just system. Jack in, yeah. Just, just jack uh, in. I just jack in. Step one, Dave. Solid jacking <laughs> off in a virtual environment. So you slide the headsets on and just kind of across your plane of vision against a sort of a seemingly an endless black void, the words Rathburn Industries scroll by. And there's like a cool logo and a catchphrase. It's like Rathburn Industries from A to B with no interruption. After that, it's kind of like the Matrix, like a world kind of rushes up from under you. Honor System and Declan, you find yourselves standing in sort of a giant, almost like Roman bath style situation, a mix of Roman baths or like in Westworld where there's just, you know, attractive courtesans of every shape and size, like everywhere, just like all alluringly gesturing to you, but no one's doing anything. And they all seem to be stuck in an infinite loop. The one thing that concerns you, though, is that Alan isn't there. So, Alan, you put your goggles on. Rathburn Industries runs across. Mm -hmm. And then you have the same vision they do of kind of the world rushing up to meet you. But right before it does, it kind of static jams, breaks up, and de And as it does so, it seems to almost be raining over a humanoid shape. 
And gradually, mm. as this sort of digital interference fades away, the shape begins to look more and more and more like a figure you've only seen images of, but you recognize him as Xanthus. <gasps> says, hello, Alan. It's been a while. What are you... Do- what... What the fuck? <laughs> I, well, I mean, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. That is a fair question. How are you enjoying my future? Are you not surprised and at, at, at awe of all the things technology can accomplish? I think I'd rather be in my world. <laughs> Me too. So you can see why I left. I know I, I wasn't perhaps fully honest with you, but... You <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Did I not help you on countless occasions? Did you not draw on my strength yeah, in your own world? Thank you for helping me only to lead me to this world and away from everything I love. Oh, You're, yeah. That's a lot of help. Thanks, Santhus. Hey, you kept drawing on my power. I couldn't force you to. And that's actually kind of the best part because, you know, I've tried this countless times. And each and every time, no one just figured out how to bridge it all the way. But you, you were just so hungry Why for are power. you here? Why are you here? Well, I came to see how you were doing. This may come as a surprise to you, but I actually bear you no ill will. But as you can see from the hellscape from which I'd come, magic is dead here. You must have felt it. You must know what I went through to know that there is something greater that you could tap into, to know how much good you could do, how much power you could wield, but to constantly be trapped by machines. You were trapped? This whole world is a trap, Alan. How much of your power have you been able to use? A pretty good amount of it. For a second, the digital image kind of frowns and almost Mm -hmm. looks like mad. He goes, ah, yes, well, interesting. (laughs) Why did you do this? Just know why. Is I, it, was it just for your own personal gain, just to get to somewhere where you could use magic? What? Alan, is your your world, Faerun, mm-hmm. dumb Faerun as I've come to call it, is <laughs> dumb Faerun a good place or a bad place, do you think? It's a place. Exactly. A place is neither good nor bad. It could be. I know from having one of my eyes transposed on yours, I've seen your journeys. I've seen what you and your dumb dumbs attempt to do. You run around, you try to right wrongs. Oh, no, my father and mother are evil. We have to stop them. Oh, no, we have to go and help this random person we just met. Oh, I lost my castle. Help me get it back. Oh, no, we'll help you. All you do is try and make the world a better place. Why is that? If a place is neither good nor bad, it's just a place, why bother doing good? Because it's the people within it that really matters. Those people can be good. People deserve happiness. I agree. And wouldn't it be better if someone brought that to them? Alan, I'm just trying to do what you and your your merry little band of idiots have been trying to do. I'm just doing it on a grander scale. Each of these worlds is poisoned. The people are suffering. Look around at the conglomerata. Have you met a single happy person since you arrived in 2099? Mm. Robots don't count. I know bourbon has an unfortunate history of being overly jolly. Yeah, okay, not really. Yeah, exactly. These worlds are sick. I am the cure. All right, so what's your cure? Well, I'm paying visits to various places, and I'm finding people just like me. Surely you must have met a few by now. And you see, Alan, there's, there's this idea, and at first I thought it was a little bit crazy, but I've come to learn after eating a few hearts that perhaps it's not so crazy after all. <laughs> Each of us is spread amongst all these different places, and think of how much more powerful we would be if we weren't constantly funneling our energy to all these mirror visions of ourselves. What if there was just one? What if there was a singularity of being? Well, Could that-, that person bring happiness to all these different worlds? If you had the power of the At gods, what cost? you piss off a friend by trapping her in a future dimension that she hates. You kill a few people. You watch no. yourself die no. over and over and over no. by your own hands. And some of them agree no. and some of them don't. But honestly, you know, the hearts taste the same either way. So really, what's the issue? No, it's not better. There's another way. Cool. You keep believing that. Anyway, Alan, I just wanted to make sure you were doing okay. This is really just a courtesy call. Uh, I'm sure you're, you've are you probably to gloat? found some friends. No, I honestly care about you. And I care about your well-being. And I, I hope you're doing okay. And I honestly do hope you find your way back to your dumb little favor. And it's interesting. In my travels, I've realized, I think possibly because of your connection to the prodigals, you're one of the few who doesn't exist anywhere else. And that is really very strange. I've killed your friend Quinny a few times now, but... You, uh, Bobbert Tingler, you're unique. You don't exist anywhere else. And that is, that is odd. 
I'm sure there's a cost to it, but really that's not my concern. Probably talk to your old man about that, actually. He might have more information for you. But in any case, uh, say hello to Bourbon Sherbert for me. I hope he's still survivalist Roberting away. Um, it's really interesting. None of the other iPals talk like that. Robots are strange. In any case, next time I'm by dumb Faerun, I'll be sure to say hi to your friends. But in the meantime, I've got a train to catch. And he kind of bows to you and he says, I really am sorry, Alan, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. And then he derezzes. And suddenly you're in a hot tub full of half-naked people gesturing alluringly to you in an endless loop. And if we looked at the universe Xanthus is in, he's wearing the exact same outfit as Hannibal Lecter at the end of Silence of the Lambs <laughs> as he hangs up the phone and says, I've got a friend to have for dinner. <laughs> he looks down and sees another Xanthus get onto a plane. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, I don't hate the idea as a visual reference of us just thinking of Xanthus as Anthony Hopkins, but a drow. Yeah, young Drownthony Hopkins. Drownthony Hopkins, yep. Do we see her in our weird uh, porn world right so now? So I think basically for a, a hot second, the two of you were on full alert trying to find her. And then all of a sudden there's an aggressive splash, but also, you know, that sound of like electronic interference. Mm -hmm. You know, for those of us alive back when 56 came bottoms were a thing, that kind of thing. It, it, <laughs> I've read closed captioning calling it modern screeching. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A, that is great. <laughs> so it is modern screeching. And honor system for you, I think it's it's absolute agony. Uh, and actually, Declan, for different reason, honor system for you, it's because it interferes with your code. Mm. Declan, for you, it's that the implant also gets shorted by this sort of thing. It's just a second and then Alan appears. Just to be clear, Alan... This is a fucking trick, right? Because if you weren't here, bad shit happened. Honestly, it's nothing to do with our goals. Okay, I take the goggles off because now I'm pretty sure we're going to get shot because it's <laughs> the easiest thing to do is get three people in a room and get them to cover their eyes. Crash is looking at his phone and then goes, oh shit, and then quickly sticks in his pocket and goes, welcome back. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sorry, was your, was your experience subpar? If so, please don't like a review. Do you know what, Crash? I had a lovely time uh, and I'll give you... Full score. Is it, is it just one room and Crash watching us, or is Crash uh, our he's, host in he's our your room? your host in your room. Okay, cool. Friends, I think we should probably go. Inside the simulation, a palaquin is carried in by a bunch of incredibly gorgeous people. You know, there's like one dwarf who's like super handsome, and she's got a gnome on top of her shoulders who's equally handsome holding up their side. And sitting on top of it is, think, the dean from Community. If he oh, had... Jim Rash? Yeah, so Jim Rash with like little Morpheus glasses wearing <laughs> a... A, a golden black silk robe. Oh, I um, love it. And holding up a bunch of grapes that just keep digitally fizzing out and then reappearing in his mouth. He just kind of greets you and he says, Welcome! Welcome! Welcome to uh, the Pleasure Dome! Ha uh ha! -huh. Okay. Um, and he just lets the drapes drop. He's like, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm sorry. I... I've been working on a really impressive way to get you all in here and, and to, to impress people, but uh, truth be told, this one's kind of gross and I'm not very good at it. Grape? And then the grapes just appear, bounce off on our system's face. Um, <laughs> goes, oh, sh oh, shit. A robot. Okay. Hi. I assume you guys are our new future, huh? And you are Atrix hard drive. I just hear Honor System say that out loud in the booth, and I'm like, oh shit, and I put my goggles <laughs> back on. Are you resing in the sky and just kind of like fall and crash through a table of. Yeah. Ow! Fucking ass! Uh oh, looks like someone took his goggles off. I'm very sorry. You do need to keep those on. This is essentially a clone program, and they don't really know I'm running it on their servers, so it's a little touchy if you drop in and out. I'm really sorry about that. Are you okay? I am doing fine. <laughs> little little VR joke. I know you're fine. Okay, so welcome. Yeah, so you're interested in the prodigals, huh? Yes, we share certain goals. Or at least we think we do on the scale of things. So, like, you say you got a big thing going on. We sort of have our own stuff brewing, and we know a couple of other things are brewing. So what are you up to? Maybe we can assist. Well, first of all, and I'm really sorry to do this, uh, just a couple uh, points of order. If I'm not mistaken, Declan McCready, a.k.a. the uh, Cobra, and Honor System, as I believe you're calling yourself now, we sent an extraction team to help you. One of our agents was killed and replaced. Our sniper team fought a separate sniper team. And you guys just disappeared. First and foremost, what's the deal, guys? I want to believe you're on side here, but uh, we lost some very good people in that firefight. We didn't expect the Commandant Pim Pim himself to show up. Um, that was pretty hairy. Yeah, I mean, we didn't expect that either. Just to be clear, though, we got directed somewhere by a man named Ranger, who dressed like an idiot, and then got brought to meet Fiddlesworth, who stated he was representing the prodigals. So oh. we thought we were doing the I right see, thing. I see, I see. Okay, that, okay, you know, that, that's fair, that's fair. You should know Fiddlesworth is no longer an issue. He has been, shall we say, contained, and he does 
air quotes and then like the, his fingers kind of glitch and then his hand has extra fingers that are also doing air quotes he's like oh, sh- oh shit shit <laughs> sorry sorry unstable connection he just shakes his hands until they're back to normal he's like, and okay. i say so just to be clear and i mind putting a gun to my head and blaming the trigger essentially yes not exactly yes but yeah you know you're 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 in the ballpark he's dead that would probably have been kinder but you know one never knows when he'll be back uh, he's been black boxed so oh, he mimes oh. like Putting on goggles and then just shaking his head and, and screaming silently. So that's that's the nice version of, of it. It's actually much worse than that. And then I go, oh, so there's still hope. Uh, and then I <laughs> check mark that he's still alive on my list because we weren't sure in my in my sub optical thing. Was, oh, cool list. What's that for? Oh, it's just something I do on my own time. You know, it's just you, some things you don't want to forget. You know, never forget. Always shoot. Those are my two rules. Oh, so here's an, an interesting thing. I notice uh, you you have a, a a man on your list here named Gene. Is that your handler from you know back in the day? Gene is a handler. Yes. Interesting. Uh, am I correct that this list is as titled a kill list? Well, I mean, I do name things rather literally. I am not crazy about the level of information you have versus what I have. Well, though. I mean, it is a mistake to plug anything robotic into another robotic thing without checking it first. I am a hacker. That said, I think I might be able to help you with that. You see, I, a long time ago, just kind of for the lols, hacked a mainframe and just stole a big old knock list. Just a bunch of stuff that no one was supposed to see. I've got his home address. Oh, I would like that very much right yeah, now. I'm Thank sure you. you. Would. Uh, well, no, I, I'm not going to give it to you right now because, uh, you know, I've also watched some TED Talks on bargaining and if the third one I watched is correct then just giving you the information without anything in return is bad bargaining so no but you know let's see if, if you guys can help us out in our little quest maybe I can help you out we came here to talk so let's talk I like him he's so literal that's that's great also for the record uh, honor system I'm poking around in your code here it's very interesting. I actually can't explain what happened to you, and that is concerning to me. Do you know why you're different? Not entirely. Interesting. Okay, well, hmm. <laughs> Sounds like a mystery for next season. Um, <laughs> and Alan, I understand that you might have some abilities that aren't so kosher. Is it true? Were the reports from the, the highway correct? They said a missile launcher, but if our reports are correct, it's more of a hand that shoots fire kind of sitch. Is that is that correct? I can do some things. Oh, mysterious. <laughs> well, we got a badass over here. Okay. All right. All right. Very impressive. Cool. Okay. Well, uh, let me level with you. This world is dying. Uh, <laughs> surprise. And Alan, I think I think you've probably noticed that if, if you're you know, one of the folks who has the like the pew pew and the the the, the, the do some stuff hand stuff. We gotta go. I think is really what we're getting at. For years, the prodigals we've been trying to get out of here, and we think we've discovered a way. You, you uh, my my records show you. You guys have had some brushes with the recently blacklisted, and he tries to say Ventus, but it just comes out as garbled static. He's like, oh goddamn. Uh, we we know who you're talking about. Thank you, Keep going. thank you. It's exhausting. Okay, great. They had access to a technology that would allow people interdimensional shift. And we've been searching for that technology forever. A few of us have managed to make the jump. Our our founder did. We understand from the rumors on the street, and particularly, Alan, if you're standing here, that Xanthus, who is unfortunately kind of a mistake person that we hung out with for a bit, he's uh, not a great dude, but he appears to have also made the jump. He Uh, did. So it is possible. Yes, I fucking knew it. I just won $5. Thank you so much. I'm going to spend that on candy. Okay, how about you give me Gene's address now, then? <laughs> I think we gave you a good one there. You know what? That's fair. And he he pings it to you. It's a suburb outside the gate. This Atrix guy is growing on me. Okay, so what's your what's your big old quest? So you got you to transport okay, or whatever. Okay, so we think our goals are within sight. And honestly, things are getting worse and worse here. The war between the houses is just confirming this. We've completely lost control of the blockchain, who admittedly we were kind of financing and pushing for a bit. But uh, now that they're actually vying for a seat themselves, it's gone completely mad. They have no business running this this place. We want to follow the old ways. We want to go find our gods. We want to find magic. We, we, we want to embrace the gifts that, that were meant for us. We understand that Ventus may have been developing transporter technology that would allow us to step through a gate into another world. Unfortunately, and of course Ventus is, as I continue this, censored always again. censored out. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, with the house being blacklisted, it seems that there's no way to do that. But we did find an interesting data trail in the moments before their servers went down that seemed to suggest that someone downloaded a list of potential sites. 
And if our records are correct, that someone was you. So what we're asking for essentially is your help. We need those transporters and I think you might need our help. So quid pro quo, as they say. In what way are you prepared to help us? I understand based on the actions that we've been able to track, you seem to have some beef with Grace and Typhus, but is there anything beyond that? Yes, there's this building called The Stack that is currently full of magic users that I know mm-hmm. Alan is passionate about busting open. And it seems like it's the core of Typhus's power and thus is the core of the whole conglomerata. And there's actually an interesting theory, which is if we bust the stack the fuck open, then magic will return to the world because Typhus is draining it for profit. Mm-hmm. So we'd really like to know where that is and get help busting it open. You might not even need to leave. Well, I think we're going to go regardless. This place is not good. But that is interesting information. Okay. Hmm. I can get my teams to work on finding the stack. We have a few leads. It usually exists as as kind of a gap. But also, and he, he looks at Alan, he's like, I grew up reading about magic and in hearing the old stories. And it just sounded so fucking fun. And if you have it, and you're saying there are other people in this world who have Mm -hmm. it, fuck it, let's set them free. Let's bring it back. I'll get to work on seeing if I can track down the location. The more access you can grant me from whatever you're up to from the various houses, the better. Whatever it is, is locked pretty deep. But I'll be happy to help you however I can. And you know what? I'll I'll go back to the product. I'll get them on it too. We've got we've got a lot of talented hackers. We have some high ranking contacts in the conglomerate. We'll we'll put them to work. Great. So take a look at that. We'll keep reviewing the things we have to see if we can find what is exactly of use to you, and then we can do a nice quid pro quo trade. Excellent. Okay, that's great. Okay, wonderful. Well, I won't be booking the sex room again because this is gross. I do like this robe, though. Pretty fancy. You look great. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go attempt to have sex with these people carrying my palaquin. That said, the program is starting to get destable, so I might just end up with my dick in a glitch. Who knows? You guys should probably go. I don't know how much longer I can keep this connection open. As they say in the conglomerata, okay, bye. And they start carrying him off to like... A weird pleasure forest. I'll take my goggles off. <laughs> Mine come pleasure off too. Forest. Yeah, and uh, he'll jack off. Oh, I'll jack out. I know. It's just fun either way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> jack, and, and then any direction is, yeah. <laughs> I think the first thing we'll do after we like leave the bar, because we've got what we need from the bar, when we get back to, I guess, the stash house, because we probably just go back yep. to there. I've got a backups of like honor systems code and my I orbital code. Uh, And I want to run comparisons of what's going on with us to make sure that our hacker friend didn't leave anything that's either going to override or record Mm -hmm. what we're seeing or fuck around in that regard if I can. Yeah, sure. So you run that. You're actually surprised to see that whatever the hacker had when you're in VR has been scrubbed. There's no trace that he was ever there, but there is also no discernible pattern Mm -hmm. or interference. Turns out he might be an ethical little fucker. I like that. Mm -hmm. Here's the big prodigal question. They all want to fucking leave, which is not terribly classy. And when they say leave, we've now learned means they all just want to go to your world. Yeah. And nobody who seems to want to go to your world really wants to start at the bottom. (laughs) Oh, and... I I have no idea of the ramifications of going to my world. I mean, I'm here because Xanthus wanted to go to my world. Yeah, and what happened before you made it to us? You said it had nothing to do with the mission. I had a visit from Xanthus. Mother fucker. What do you mean, a visit? I mean, he appeared in the VR sphere. So he hacked our hacker, essentially. But he is not on this plane of existence. How did he do that? Alan, you actually know more than either of us about this. So how, how did he... D- so where did he call? What's going on? Yeah. I know that Xanthus can move between worlds. He's been, from what he said, killing versions of himself to gain more power. Oh, is that new? That feels like that's new. We haven't talked about that. Yeah, I just learned that. I mean, I knew he'd come to my world, but I didn't know that he could go elsewhere too. So I, we know that people can move. Back and forth. Why is he ki- to gain more power? So would we make you more powerful if we find the you on this world and then you kill them? If we can believe Xanthus, and I don't know what to believe now, he says that I'm the only one of me. What could that mean? I don't know. But apparently there's one of everyone on every world. So you're like, for lack of a better term, a singularity. It's strange that you use that term because that's the term that Xanthus used. Oh, well, I guess it's one of those things where it's just like the literal word fits um i guess so 
What this means is we have to be very sure Alan doesn't die, because I don't know what any of this means, but you and I have just become even more expendable on our system on the scale of things. Are the prodigals planning on going to another plane of existence and murdering their doppelgangers? I may have an issue with that. That, from what we heard, would be unknown at this point, but if they had this information... Maybe. I doubt they all want to leave this world to go somewhere to be homeless. I will say you do remember back when you first met Alan that Bourbon Sherbert told you that Xanthus had been booted out of the prodigals for radical thinking. So I guess the implications are more a question mark for your world, Alan, because how do you feel about refugees? I mean, if we bust open the fucking stack, then none of the technology works. So if people want to go somewhere, it's not like they could bring a gun because the gun would just be a metal box. The technology to create portals might stop working as well. Now, there's an interesting conflict Mm -hmm. of interest. However, if we bust the stack and then we give them locations to portals that don't work, prodigals sort of have to make a choice. And it sounds like they're ethical, so I don't see them re-enslaving all of the magicians. Yeah. And if we use the genetics machine, they couldn't fucking find them anyways. Mm-hmm. It will also point out that you still don't exactly know how quantum energy works. You know that it's being used to power a lot of the technology in this world, but you're not sure what effect destroying the stack would have. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's got to make things better, right? <laughs> <laughs> This episode of Dum Dums and Dragons 2099 features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Laura Hamstra at EL Hamstring on Twitter, and our DM Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode's sound was edited and mixed by Laura Hamstra. The system we're playing is called Stars Without Number, and Dum Dums and Dragons artwork is by Del Borovic, who can be found at delborovic.com. Our theme songs are Core Collapse and Sanctuary of the Sky Gods by Nathaniel Yverne, and our ad music is No Control and Chiefs by Jazzar, J-A-H-Z-Z-A-R, all available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice, or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. That's D-U-M-B, D-U-M-B, D-I-C-E. Now I'm off to do future things before we return for the next episode of... Dum Dums and Dragons 2099 Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time Christian Manicola, Long Long, Jason Denson, James Quayar, and Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them. And a little bit of thanks to you.